apes together strong. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude and I'm here to review Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes takes place about a decade after Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Alzheimer's disease has spread, the population of the humans have died from the disease. So now it's a world where Caesar takes over, but now it turns out that there are actually some humans still living. So the apes and the humans now have to learn to work together and find peace. But when that happens, complications ensue. So honestly, Don the Planet of the Apes, I know a lot of people were excited for this film, but I'm gonna just be honest, I wasn't excited, I was just very interested in this film. If you see my movie review for Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I really liked that film. I thought it was really good, really surprised me. I gotta say, it surprised me, just like Rise of the Planet of the Apes did, except Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is even better than Rise. Wow! This movie made me go bananas, because this movie is just fantastic. Fantastic. This is not only one of the best sequels I've ever seen, but it might even be the best part of the Apes movie I've seen ever. So of course we have Caesar played by Andy Serkis. All the other reviewers are talking about him, so I might as well just start with him. Andy Serkis is fucking amazing. He is so awesome. And I don't mean to get all loud, but I really mean it. This guy needs to get an Oscar nomination. I know you're hearing that from other reviewers. It's very cliched for me to say at this point, but I really do mean it. He deserves it. He works his ass off, and I feel like he doesn't get recognized enough. This guy needs an award. You know who also does very freaking amazing during the motion capture? Toby Kibble as Koba. And dear God, is Koba just a mean ape. He is just bad ladies and gentlemen. He is one of the most menacing, scariest antagonists I've seen in film in a while. And this is a fucking ape that just creeped the hell out of me. Especially once you know the final battle scene begins and you see him riding on that horse with those two guns. Once that happened, I'm just all like, holy shit. Shit just got real. You know, surprisingly, I didn't know this, but Judy Greer actually did a motion capture too. She played Caesar's wife. She did a really good job portraying the character. You know, the, the character doesn't really speak, but you could see through the facial expressions of the character. Now, as for the human side, I honestly thought the humans did a really good job. The side humans, you know, they're there, but the main humans, I cared for them just as much as I did with the apes. You get to see both the apes' point of view and the humans' point of view, how both of them have a similar characterizations because they want to protect their family. And that's one of the things I loved about the film. Because you could see Caesar's point of view, why he reacts like this, because all he wants to do is protect his kind. And Jason Clark's character is the same way, where he just wants to protect his own kind. Cinematography for the film looks beautiful. The visuals on the apes look amazing. You could just tell there was a lot of work put into the apes and this world. It just really amazed me visually. Jason Clark does a really great job here. Even though I cared for the other main humans, I say he's the human I connected the most with. He was just the human you felt the most sorry for, the human you could root the most for. And I like how he and Caesar kind of connected more and more as the movie was progressing. I really love Jason Clark's character and he did a really good job. Carrie Russell was also really good here, and the actor who plays the son did a very great job. And Gary Oldman, could you say he was underused? Yeah, but was he fantastic? You bet. When I saw the previews, you kind of get the sense he's a villain, but no, he's actually not a villain. Not at all, actually. Like, yes, he'll. there's a few things he does do, especially near the end, 
But it's all like he's not doing it because he's a villain. He's doing it because, well, he cares about the humans. He wants to protect his own kind. And you could see where Gary Oldman's character is coming from. This is definitely a very character-driven movie. You don't really get action until, you know, the final battle sequence. But even with the character-driven moments, you're not bored because you're just so invested with the characters, both apes and humans. The dialogue. And the apes, too. The first 15 minutes of the movie has no humans. It's literally just apes. And you see them use sign language on each other. Now, they don't even have to speak. You could just see their expressions, what their sign language is, and you're just on bored with it that whole time. The final battle sequence is really intense, it's really haunting, it's very dark. The soundtrack makes that final battle sequence alone even more haunting. And there are actually certain moments that got me choked up. The one that got me the most involved, you know, Caesar looking at a video camera, that's all I'm gonna say, but that one moment right there actually had tears coming out of me. I couldn't hold it in. It was just one of those moments where it literally just got to me. This movie, not only was it very powerful in terms of the characters and terms of the action sequences, but in emotion too, and just how raw it is. And making me feel for the characters because I really cared, not just for the apes, but for the humans too. The main ones at least. Side humans, not really, because they're just there, but the main humans I actually do care for. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a fantastic sequel. It's one of my favorite films of this year. It's actually, for me, a huge surprise considering I came into this not excited, just interested. Even though the original is really good, this sequel just blows the original out of the park. It's visually fantastic. The action sequences are dark, intense, and haunting. You really care for the humans and apes. The visuals on the apes are fantastic. The motion capture on um are great. Beautiful cinematography, great soundtracks, amazing raw emotions to add a lot of depth to the characters and the story. The tone is dark and it just has you wondering where this franchise is going. Wow, wow, this movie is so great. Die of the Planet of the Apes, I I'm gonna give it four out of four stars because I have no flaws with this movie. Me not caring for the side characters is not an issue with me because you know they're just there to elevate the story. Not only one of the best films of the year, but one of the best films films of this summer. By the way, I got to join Mark Krojic and the others on the spoiler room to discuss and spoil Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I will leave a link in the description below, but of course check it out if you have seen the film because there are spoilers. Apes! I am 22 Tiger Dude! Don't forget that I will always have TAGA POWER!